Okay. Um, I'm going to just give a quick, a quick little rundown from last um, week because we, I just did two pages last week and I see that we're almost out of time already. So um, we talked about this last week. We talked about how Abraham's uh, servant went and he was looking for the bride, right? We left off, uh, let's see, we, if you could, if you could uh, go to Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17, he's talking about we are the elect of God, holy and beloved. He's talking about what we put on. A servant is looking for his bride that has tender mercy. Kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even if Christ forgave you, so you must also do. But above all things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also we were called in one body to be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. We give thanks in everything that we do. Remember, remember how I told you that when you go, when you're going through your day and you're doing everything that you're doing, at the end of the day, uh, we look, we kind of do a little hindsight. How did the day go? What did I do? And at the end, was my day pleasing to my father? Was is what I did was it pleasing to him? We have to uh, remember that we studied, in the past we have studied uh, that we are in the last of the last days, correct? If you go to Second Timothy, that's what we're studying, we're going to go back to when, when we're done with this in the next week. Um, we're going to go back to Second Timothy 3.15. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. Do we see that today? Lovers of money, do we see that today? Boasters. Do we see that today? Proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. Do we see that today? Unthankful, unholy. Do we see that? Unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, if strong and haughty. Do we see that today? Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Now I'm going to pick up where we left off. And from such people, turn away. How do you defeat unkindness? Remember, the servant was looking for the bride. He went, and he was, he, he had just said a prayer, and he was asking the Lord that is the, the wife that he was searching for, Isaac, if he would come out and to ask him, and he would, he would ask her, give me a drink. And she would tell him, I'll give you a drink. And they would quickly give him a drink. And remember, she, she did it immediately. And then she what? She, and then she put her jar down. And then she went and got uh, the water for the camels. If you could show the, the well, the well, similar to, to, they're all, no, up, up, go all the way up. Go up, 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 up. I think that's okay. Go back down. Okay, there we go. So those wells were not were not like wells that you could just go. Oh, here we go. Now we have it goes down, it goes up automatic. Back then, no. Back then, you had to you had to really work to get a a, a jug of water, and the jugs they had they were just regular just made out of aluminum or tin, that, are very, is, that is very easy. There were just that were heavy, made out of clay, made out of heavy. And when they would put it in, in the well, the, 
the fixture or the well handle, it wasn't an easy one. It was made out of that big board. Remember I showed you that big board? And to just, it would take all her strength to roll it up because think, think. The jug is heavy. The water in the jug is heavy. So when she went and she started picking, she was working to draw water from the well. She was working to draw water from the well. It was not an easy task. It was not something that you could, that you know you would say, "Oh, I'll go do it. I'll go do it." No, because remember, she not only did it for him and his how many camels, ten camels. Remember how many gallons of water a camel drinks? Yes, and and for, that's for one camel. Can you imagine ten? So she had to. She did all that. And she did it grudgingly in complaining. Absolutely not. She did it cheerfully. Very cheerfully. She was like, you know, like, I'll go get you some water. And she, what did it say? She ran. And she was going to get the water. Who knows how long it took? Because she, it doesn't take just a little time just to go and get the, the water. No, she had to go work. She worked hard that day. It must have been maybe in the morning or at noon or whatever until she got all that water. And not only for them, but she had to do it for her family also. So the servant was looking at her, and the bra- that uh, uh, young woman worked very hard, and she had a kind heart. She was clothed in kindness. She had the robe of kindness. The servant is looking for a bride that has kindness. Remember we studied pure, we studied pure, we studied um, beautiful. She, and she was clothed with a robe of kindness. Kindness is something that we Christians need to remember, us ladies need to remember, that we have to walk in. Kindness. We're kind of forgetting what that is. We have to work in kindness. It's very rare to see a smile. Think of it when you're walking a church. A church is supposed to be a happy God. Yay! You know? But, no, you walk in and... and I, we are very blessed that our church greets people. I, I like it because it's... it's Someone's always at the door. Someone's always greeting somebody. And, uh, and I like that because that's what makes or breaks the church. Is the people in the church, the congregants in the church, it's what are you displaying to someone new that is coming in? What are you showing them? Are you showing them kindness? Are you showing them love? What are you showing them? If we just ignore them, and, oh, hi, hi, bye, bye. They're not going to come back. They're not going to come back. So we have to wear kindness. We have to uh, um, wear kindness. Uh, we were told to stay away from those people that were lovers of themselves and all this stuff. We so stay away from them. Stay away from them. We must clothe ourselves with kindness. Kindness is a sincere and voluntary use of one's time, talent, and resources to better the lives of others. One's own life and the world through genuine acts of love, compassion, generosity, and service. Kindness involves choice because there are many alternatives to kindness to kindness that will attempt us that will tempt us to life. Kindness is love in action and a source of joy and strength. That's what kindness is. 
It was our sins that nailed him to the cross. Yes, in his love and kindness, Jesus extended mercy to us and took our punishment. He gave his life for a moment so that we can live our lives for eternity. Amen? The servants quietly watch. Let's go back to uh, verse 21. That's what we were reading in the in scripture. The servant quietly watched her. He studied her. So he was just watching what she was doing. And he was just kind of just sitting there drinking his water and just watching her. Her movements. Watching her. How she probably was just then look at him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you know. Um, a long time ago, years ago, my husband and I and our grandkids would come and clean the church. We would start from one end to another. And guess what we did? We put the worship music on, and we were cleaning the toilets and singing and, and worshiping. <laughs> we were doing it with joy. We were doing it out of the heart. When, when you uh, commit yourself to do something for the Lord, do it with joy. With joy. Don't complain. Just do it with joy. Because you have to stop and think, how, why did you commit yourself? Did you commit yourself just so that you could be seen? Just so that you say, well, I do this, and I do that, and I do this, and I do that, and oh, I'm supposed to be here, oh, I'm supposed to be No. No. You do it because it's in your heart to do. Amen? You do it because it's in your heart. So the servant quietly watched her. He wanted to be sure that the Lord had given him an answer. And had made his trip successful. He already had gotten, he already had a, arrived. After the time was finished drinking, he gave Rebecca a gold ring that weighed one fourth of an ounce. And also gave her two gold arm bracelets that weighed two ounces each. He was now convinced that he's going to move on. He has to be of Abraham's. And remember, the servant asked, who is your father? And is there a place for your father's house for me and my man to sleep? Rebecca answered, my father is Bethel, the son of Milka, and Nahor, Nahor, I think it is N-A-H-O-R. Is it Nahor or Nahor? One of those. Then she said, Yes, we have straw and other food for your camels and a place for you to sleep. Can you imagine now? Remember that he was he, he had prayed and he had asked the Lord to show him that that if if the if the servant would do so many things, if the servant would would uh, uh, give him a drink of water, if the servant would um, also um, attend to the attend to the camels. Is the servant would do certain things so that he it could prove to him that she was the one to be Isaac's bride, right? So can you imagine him seeing everything that was happening? Everything was being answered. Everything that he asked of her, what he was seeing. And he was so excited. He had just traveled, what, 450 miles? He had just traveled all the way all the way to, um, I forgot the name of the city. Oh my God, I forgot the name of the city. It was 450 miles away. 450 miles away. So, no, I can't remember the city. Ah. So, uh, so anyway, so he got there and he was tired. 
and he drank the water. And, and can you imagine the excitement that he must be feeling? He's close to the end of his journey. He's close to the end of what he was, the task that Abraham had, had given him to do. This task was very, very important. This task was, he made, um, Abraham made him promise, remember? Abraham made him promise before who? Before who? Who did, did, did um, the servant make the promise? Before Abraham and who? The Lord. Before Abraham and the Lord. And he made the promise. It's an oath. You cannot break those. It's an oath. And he made the promise to, the, to him that uh, he was going to go and do with the journey, to the journey and get a wife for, for, for Isaac. So he was, I, I can just imagine the servant must have been feeling Everything he had asked the Lord was being performed before his very eyes in action and word for word. He must have been praising and worshiping the Lord with all his might. The servant bowed and worshiped the Lord. When, when you are praying and you're asking the Lord to do some specific things, and you're seeing it come true. How does that make you feel? You just, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Right? In verse 27, he said, Praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham. The Lord has been kind and loyal to him by leading me to his own people. Who did he have in mind? How much did he love his master. He's still thinking of his master. He's still thinking of his master. How much did he love his master? Praise the Lord, the God of my master, Abraham. The Lord has been kind and loyal to to him by leading me to his own people. Then Rebecca, Rebecca ran and told her family about all these things. She had a brother named Levin. Okay, so she, she, so she just ran over. She was excited. It, I would too if I would get a bracelet like that. <laughs> she was excited and then a pure gold. Jeez Louise. She told him that, she told him what the man had said to her. Levin was listening to her. And when he saw the ring and the bracelet on his sister's arms, he ran out to the well. There the man was standing by the camel at the well. Remember what we discussed about the wells, all the things that have happened in the well, by the well? Levin said, sir, you are welcome to come in. You don't have to stand outside. I have prepared a room for you to sleep. In, in a place and a place for your camels. So Abraham's servant went into the house. Levin unloaded his camels and gave them straw and fed them. He gave Abraham's servant water so that he and the man with him could wash their feet. Levin then gave him food to eat, but the servant refused to eat it. This man was committed. This man had a task. This man had a mission. This man was committed to do what his master had sent him to do. We, ladies, have a task. And we have to be committed. I'm sorry. What I'm doing is there's a lot of little blood flying all over me. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, oh. Okay. So, he, so, <laughs> so he was he was committed. He was committed. He had a task to do. He knew the importance of the task. He promised that he was going to do it. So he was committed. He didn't want to eat. He wasn't done with the task yet. He didn't want to eat. So he refused to eat. 
His mission was his priority, and it wasn't complete yet. He said, I will not eat until I have told you why I came. So Levin said, tell us. So in Genesis 24, verse 34, we're going to read. Are you turn there, please? Are we there? Thank you, Jesus. Genesis chapter 24, verse 34. So he said, watch this. I want you to listen. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. By saying this, now these are my notes, by saying this, the servant removed the garment of his own authority and robed himself with the garment of his master Abraham's authority. Now he's going to speak for his master. The first thing, first thing first, I am not my own. I belong to my master. He, that's what we're moving. I belong to my master. He was his master's Abraham's ambassador. He removed himself. Everything he did was what his master told him to do. Does that sound familiar? Jesus said, I do nothing that my father does not tell me to do. Everything I do is because my father tells me to. Right? Just as we are not our own, we belong to our master, Jesus Christ. We are his ambassadors. Everything we do is done unto him. Amen? The servant continued to speak about his master with excitement. He said with Nahor how great the Lord had blessed Abraham. Is that how we share the Lord Jesus Christ with others? Do we do it with joy and excitement? Can, can you picture in your mind, can you picture in your mind, he's, he's telling Nahor and Levin, my, the Lord has blessed my master. My master has camels. My master has pens. My master has Servants, my master has gold. My master has a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. He's been blessed and blessed. How excited! And I want your daughter to come with me to marry his son. Do you know that we have a lot? We are heirs and co-heirs of who? His son. So there is a lot of blessings that we are bestowed upon. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Yet we don't see it. We walk around like if we're orphans. We're not orphans, ladies, uh, gentlemen. We're not. We are son and daughters of kings. Whew. So he was speaking with great excitement. I want to put a little warning here. When you talk to others about Jesus and you're talking to others, there is an excitement there. There is a lot of excitement there. But in your excitement, do not force the beautiful word on the heart that don't want to hear. Because you're throwing your pearls to the point. It's suffice for them to say, I don't want to hear. And then, someone else? If, if he's meant to, someone else will come. But don't force it. Don't push it. Just pray. Someone else will come. Amen? Verse 35, And the Lord has greatly blessed my master. So that he has become rich and he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and servants and maids and camels and donkeys. Now Sarah, my master's wife, bore him a son to my master in her old age and he has given him everything that he has. My master made me swear, saying, 
You shall not take a wife or my son from the daughters of the Canaanite in whose land I live. But you shall go to my father's house and to my relatives and take a wife for my son. I said to my master, suppose the woman does not follow me. And he said, the Lord before whom I have walked will send his angel with you to make your journey successful. And you will take your wife for my, for, for my son, from my relatives, and from my father's house. Verse 41. Then you will be free from your oath when you come to my relatives. And if you do not give, and if, and if they do not give her to you, you will be free from my oath. He was saying, so I came today to the spring and said, Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will make my journey on which I go successful. Because Abraham told him, go and get. What did Jesus tell you? What did he say? Do my word, don't worry. I am with you always. We don't only have an angel, we have him. We have his spirit in us. I am with you always. 43. Behold, I am standing by the spring, and, and may it be that the maiden who comes out to draw, and to whom I say, please, let me drink a little water from your jar. And she will say to me, remember, he's telling us, He's telling uh, Nahor, and he's telling them everything that happened, okay? So he's repeating this. He's telling him this is what happened. So he said, uh, she will say to me, you drink, and I will drop them for your camels also. Let her be the woman the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, behold, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder and went down to the spring and drew. And I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will water your camels also. So I drank, and she watered the camels also. Then I asked her and said, whose daughter are you? And she said, the daughter of Bethel made her son, which might the voice to him. But I, but I, oh, and I put the ring on her nose and the bracelet on her wrist. And bowed low and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had guided who had guided me to the right way to take the daughter for my master's kinsman for his son. Rebecca was the choice. She was the one. She was God's choice. We are his choice. We are the bride. Do you hear me? We are the bride. We are his toys. You are here because he chose us. Oh, ladies, I got them. We are the every we are we have been betrothed to Jesus, the Son of God. Woo. Can you hear that? We can't even get get a get an arms around that, can we? It's too much. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So now if you are going to deal kindly and truly with my with my master, tell me. And if not, let me know that I may turn to the right and to the left. So he said, I want to know. And he's telling us, the servant is asking us, do you really want to follow me? Do you really, are you really committed to me? We must be committed. 50, verse 50. Then Levin and Bethel replied, the matter comes from the Lord, so we cannot speak to you bad or good. Here is Rebecca before you. Take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. When Abraham's servant 
heard their words, he bowed himself to the ground before the Lord. When the Lord grants us our most dire request, we are so, so relieved that all we can do is just sit there and silently bow to thank Him. When He has given us that answer, and we have been praying for it for a long time, we can sit there and just be at awe. And what he has done. We can sit and we could do hindsight. Like our sister Rose here and I, we were praying for Eric for years. For years. And now everything that we have prayed for has transpired and we sit there and we look up and we still say, This is God! God! Of course it was God. Of course it was God. Did we not ask? Did we not pray for it? So how come we don't believe that he can do it? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. So the thing that we all can do is just sit there and silently bow and thank him. His journey was almost completed, but not quite. Much was riding for God's people upon the success of this journey. A whole lot was riding upon the success of this. <laughs> we wouldn't be here if there was not success of that journey. The servant, no doubt, prepared very well for the success of the journey. Great detail was put on the kinds of gifts to take. Everything pointed to the profession and the wealth of the groom. When the servant went and he started packing the camels when he went and got ready, he put the choices of what they had in those ten camels. He didn't just go, okay, oh, yeah, 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 no. He was presenting the best of his master. The best of what his master had. The servant, the Holy Spirit, presents the best, the best of his. The best of what he had. He said, come to me. And I will give you eternal life. Come to me. I will erase your past and give you a new life. I will erase and clean that ugly picture on your canvas. And look, I'm going to give you a beautiful canvas. And look how beautiful the picture is going to be that I am going to be painting of your life. The colors are going to be brighter. It's going to be more detailed, more vivid, and it's going to blend together beautifully because you're my bride. Please read. Our groom has sent his servant also with gifts, the gift of the Spirit. There are no better gifts than those. There are no better. Verse 53, the servant brought out articles of silver and articles of gold and garments and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave precious things to her mother and her brother. Do you realize, because you are who you are, whenever you go somewhere, they're blessed? Have you ever, have you ever noticed that? Have you ever gone to a store and it's empty and you walk in and when you walk in, hey, wait a minute, it was empty when I walked in and then it's all full? You know what I'm saying? It's awesome. It's awesome. It, it, it's hard to explain. Then he and the men who were with him ate, drank, and spent the night. 
When they arose in the morning, he said, send me away to my master. Imagine the state of the heart, the state of mind. He must have been so excited. He was mad. He had everything. <laughs> the bride. He had the bride. He wanted to go back and go back to the bride. The Holy Spirit is searching still for his bride to be complete. So that he can say, here comes the master and here is the bride. Oh my God. Isn't that awesome? Woo! The state of mind that he must have been excited and eager to go home to his master with Isaac's bride. Even, even in this, Satan's demon tried to break that lineage that was coming. He wasn't complete. It wasn't complete yet. The journey was not complete yet. Into our understanding, I didn't know. No. But her brother and her mother said, let the girls stay with us for a few days. Maybe say ten. Afterwards, she may go. What purpose would that have served? What purpose would that have served? They already had said yes. You know, everything was ready. What purpose would that have served? Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. When the Spirit of God compels you to do something, you must act upon it immediately. I'm going to repeat that again. When the Spirit of God compels you, not, oh, I think it might be the Spirit. I, I don't, I'm not, but no, 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 no. When it compels, you know what I'm talking about. When it compels you to do something, you have a word. Don't sit with the word. Stand up and speak it. When you, you know what I'm saying? So, when the Spirit has sent you saying to me, don't wait, don't ponder, don't question it, just do it. There's a reason. The Holy Spirit is drawing you to the Holy Spirit is drawing you to change your life. Make a decision. Don't wait. If the Holy Spirit is telling you, we're the last speaker, and all of a sudden you're getting this urge, I want to know more about Jesus. I want to get closer to God. Something in you is stirring. Something in you is pulling you. But it is time, and he is calling his people. Don't wait. You're giving, you're giving the Antichrist, you're giving the demons time to change your mind. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, get baptized right away. So you could show the others what you are doing in the inside. What if Rebecca's mother and brother talk Rebecca out of going with a servant? She was, after all, a stranger. What would have happened? A big mess. Father God would have continued to do what he was going to do, but it would have been a big mess because, you know, when, when we delay, we give the enemy room to come in our little heads and start talking to us and start changing our way of, our way of doing things, the way of thinking. What Father God is telling you to do, he'll say, no, you can't do that. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. You can't do that. Who are you? You have absolutely no education. Who are you to stand up? Who are you? You, you? you can't do it. If you allow that to come in, he will win, and you will not do anything. And what good is that? 
when he comes and you see him face to face and he tells you, what did you do with the talents I gave you? What did you do with the gifts I gave you so that you could use on earth? What did you do with them? Well, I was going to be like that, that, that servant. Well, you know, Lord, I knew you were going to ask me and, well, I, I just, I just, I brought them back to you. I brought, here they are. I brought them back to you. Where's the, where's the interest? Where, where's the investment? Where are the people that you call? Where are the people that you touch lives? Where are the lives that you touch with the gifts that I gave you? None. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to mess up because I didn't think I was qualified. I, I don't think I had the ability to do it. I don't, it's like digging a hole and saying, putting the coin there, and then the master comes and here, Lord, here it is. No investment whatsoever. The talent that you have is not for you to just sit and do nothing. The talent is for you to use it in his kingdom. Right? And it's beautiful when you do. He said to them, Do not delay me since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, we will call the girl and consult her wishes. Then they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. Remember when the servant asked his master, What if, what if she would not agree to go with him, with him? The master would release him of his oath. Remember? In, in, in Genesis 24, 5, 8, 8, when he said, But suppose I can't find a girl who will come so far from home. The servant asked. Rebecca had to be willing to exercise what? The choice. The, the, the decision was hers to make. The groom would have never accepted a bride that was not willing. He would never force his love on anyone. The groom will not do that. He loves us too much. It had to be Rebecca's choice. Rebecca had to make a choice. We have to make a choice. The servant is looking for his bride, but the bride has to be willing to go. The bride has to be willing to serve. The bride has to be clothed in righteousness. Her dress is beautiful. Her dress is beautiful. It's kindness. It's love. Next week we're going to get everything and close everything together. And you're going to see how everything is going to come to play. And it's beautiful how this story, this journey is similar to what Father God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are doing now. And you would never have seen it had it not been broken down. But I understand it a lot better now that, that I've studied it and I see that uh, there's a lot of stories that were told and we say, this story of, no, they're for us. They're for us to read. They're for us to understand. They have put it to open our eyes and see. They're put it to see that the Holy Spirit is not up there. The Holy Spirit is here. And he is still looking. And guess what? We are helping him look. You know, I sit to hear um, Grace, he just accepted our Lord, the Lord, a couple of Sundays ago. And now she wants to get baptized. Isn't that awesome? And how old are you, Lisa? She's just in 25. She's the youngest kid, right? No more younger than 25. She's the youngest here. And I'm going to tell you something. I want to tell you something, guys. Don't despise the older women. Because if you sit here, you're going to glean a lot of wisdom. You're going to glean a lot of insight. Because being here when you're young is very important for you. Very important. And I wish that the younger women, the younger ones, the younger girls would come so they can learn, so they can hear. You're very, very wise to be here 
because you're going to bring from so many. And you know what this group does with our little ones? We love them and we protect them. And we get them under our wings. So if you've got friends, bring them. Mercy, <laughs> mercy, mercy, mercy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So, did we learn a little bit more today? Any questions? 